بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له من يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نعبده ورسوله الحمد لله I like to welcome my brothers, my sisters, my teachers, the ulama al-kiram for this blessed gathering. Our aim and our objective was to try and expound and try to understand what's missing from our revival today, what's missing from the development of, of Islam amongst our communities and our societies today. And what we identified is that one of the most obvious problems that we're suffering from are the absence of certain attributes, the absence of khisal, which I'll explain in a second, uh, absence of certain characteristics which perfected the earlier generations and maintained our izzah throughout Islamic history, but today are waning off and today are desperately needed more so than ever to try and perfect our character, to try and make us return back to Islam in its most perfect and pristine sense. And that's why the talk is called, and indeed the conference is called, The Lost Virtues, Rediscovering Excellence. Why? Because these virtues were those kind of characteristics and modes of behavior that perfected and saved the people from before and gave them izzah. And it is only by returning to these and finding them again studying them, actualizing them, and then putting them into practice and perfecting them, that we will then have rediscovered excellence. And the word in Arabic, in English we've, it's been called attributes or characteristics, but the word in Arabic is called khasla or khisal in the plural. And what, what a khasla is, in the Arabic they, they used to say that when something is very praiseworthy, something very noteworthy in one's character, when there's a, a very great characteristic, then that's what a khasla is. It is the exact translate, it is the exact word that we're looking for, that we want to try and discover when we're trying to understand this subject. And the point here is that khisal, these modes of behavior, these, these aspects, and the easiest way to understand what they are is to give a few examples, some of which you've seen today, al wal istiqama, wal adl, wal sabr, wal, you know, these uh, bravery and shuja and strength, these kinds of characteristics in one's makeup, in one's actions, are what make a person great. It, 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 are those things which affect other people, are those things which leave a lasting impression upon society. And these khisal are part of iman itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created insan min ma'in maheen, from a despised fluid, and it is nothing, from nothing effectively. But with the potential to be absolutely the best. يعني, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed of a surety we have created insan, insan in the best of molds, in the best of stature. يعني, this person, this man, this woman has the ability to be perfect, insan kamil. Perfect in every single way. But it is because they leave the way of Islam and its teachings that what happens and then actually we return him back to where where he belongs if he doesn't have these khisal the lowest of the low except for those except those who have faith and then act upon that faith because they do righteous actions and there is no such righteous action except that you act according to knowledge. And that knowledge is going to be based upon your Iman. And Iman is nothing but a collection of khisal. It's a collection of characteristics and modes of behavior. That's why the Prophet wasallam said that the highest form of Iman is what? What's the best khasla that anyone can ever have out of all of creation? Is to say La ilaha illallah and to believe in it and to stand firm upon it and to act upon it. And what is the lowest part but concern for others, a trait, a characteristic which is a fantastic uh, trait and something which encompasses 
uh, wanting for your brother what you want for yourself, wanting to ward off any harm or any danger to other people. The Prophet ﷺ said that the adna, the least part of faith, is to take something out of the uh, out of the road, like a branch or like a brick or like something which you see that's going to potentially in the future might cause a problem for someone. So that's another part, another khasla, another uh, mode, another characteristic that yani, one should be aware of. And in the same hadith, he said, and haya, modesty, is part of iman. Yani, modesty as well is something that we should think about and concentrate on. And when I say think about and concentrate on, is because these characteristics in the days, in our glory days, used to be studied. First, one would have to th work out exactly what they are. And then they would be studied. Then they would be actualized. Yani, you learn exactly how it comes about and what are the issues and the parameters and what are the, the controlling factors and the standards. And then they would implement it upon themselves and actualize it, practice it. And then they would work to perfection. They would try to make it perfect. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu is called Al Uswatun Hasana, the perfect example. Like the rest of the Anbiya, Insan, creation, who by nature, Khuliqal Insan Da'ifa, by nature they are weak, by nature they are naqis, they are deficient, except those who work upon themselves and work upon the characteristics of courage and honor and dignity. And these kind of things that can be perfected by the people once they are. Once they are, then we see the generation and the, and the people that it creates. And so now we have a nice problem. A nice problem in that we're, what are we trying to do today is but to try and uh, find these characteristics in Islamic figures, in the figures of Islamic history that we know from the Sahaba and from the Salaf and from the A'imma, the Imams and from the Nubala, the noble people of Islam and the Ahlul Sharaf and the honorable people of Islam, the men and the women that we've seen in our history, you will find that amongst their general excellence in Islam, they individually perfected certain characteristics that they are well known for. And you can list them off. The problem here, as I said, the nice problem that we have is who do we choose? How can we be, how can we be selective? It's very, very difficult. Which page do you turn over? Which page do you stop? You're, you're, you're trying to find one example and then you see another example. Then you think, well, which one's a better example? Which one? it's, our history is full of it. Whatever chapter you want to look at, whatever khasla you want to concentrate on, whatever characteristic you want to study, you will find in Islam someone who has perfected it. So if we look at the khasla of bravery, for example. Bravery. Yani Islam stands for bravery. And Muslims are the most brave of people. Or at least they should be. And that's the problem. Because we're not. We have allowed the fear of other people and the fear of the dunya and the fear of loss to come into our lives. And it has affected our condition. It has made our hearts weak. And people with weak hearts cannot carry such a burden and such a, uh, such a strong deen. And they will not be able to give it the, the, the respect that it, uh, that it deserves. That is why when the people who were able to carry it and they came along and they took Islam and they, they made it shine, you will find that because they were strong enough to handle it. If you look at Khalid ibn, ibn al-Walid radiallahu an, when they say about, when they give his example in terms of bravery, you know, it's like a man who just didn't care. For him, it's like as if life is nothing. They said, our uh, Ustad told us that when he was uh, fighting uh, against the Romans, he had uh, the, the, the Muslims behind him and the Romans, they came. And the Romans being like very, very clever as they, as they were and as they are today, instead of wanting to face us themselves, okay, what did they do? They want to find someone else to face us yeah, and get some other people from them, some Ar other Arabs, cause some fitna, cause some kind of friction and set one off against the other, let them fight each other, let them kill each other, we we'll get rid of both of them and if they're still there, then we'll come and we'll finish them off. Think back, to, think back to the last couple of years, you'll know the scenario. The big difference between these days and those days is that they were dealing with men and not dealing with the disasters that we are today. So when, when Khalid ibn Walid saw the Christian Arabs that had been gathered by the Romans and they were there and they were standing on the battlefield facing each other and the Romans were behind the yani remote controlling the whole thing. Khalid ibn Walid, he walked straight through his army, straight to the front, straight to the, to, to the, the Christian, uh, uh, the Arabs who are waiting. They don't know what's happening, what's going on here. He went, he found the leader, he grabbed him and put him in uh, 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 an arm lock 
and pulled him through the whole uh, line of, of his Arabs and brought him back to, to his own people, just like that. And the Arabs who saw this, they were shocked. They couldn't understand what had happened here. What kind of insan is this and who just walks as if he owns the place? As if, he, as, as if life to him doesn't matter. And they all run. All the Arabs that just absolutely left the area. And that's it. The, the, the Romans, their plan was destroyed. And we know about Khalid ibn Walid. What more do you want to hear about him? What more do you want to hear about the rest of the Sahaba? Or the Mujahideen of this Ummah? Hatta you heard the, uh, the exploits of Imam Shamil at the Ghastani earlier on. Look at Ali radiallahu an. When he was facing uh, the, the, uh, the Quraysh at Badr. And who did they put forward as their main person? As their main person to, to start the, the war, to, to, to uh, have a face-off against the Muslims. But one of the, uh, one of the warriors called Al-Amr ibn Al-Amri. And he was one of the big uh, Quraishi figures. And one of the ones who had lost, uh, 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 wanted revenge and in the highest form. Because his family had been killed and he was under so much stress and he had, had the pressure of, of his uh, tribe. They wanted their honor avenged. So what happened? So when he went forward, he stood in front of the Muslims, a small group only. And he shouted across to them. He said, where is, the, where is the one who's going to come and face me? To start this battle off. Where is the one who's going to come and, and start this? And Ali radiallahu an, he stands up and he says, yes, I am the one for this. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Ejlis, sit down. This is Amr. It's not yani, someone that you just think you can handle. This is Amr. This is their best fighter. So Ali is now waiting. And this man now is now standing up and you know, he's in front of his people goading the Muslims and showing off in front of his own and you know, whipping up the situation like this. And he says the same thing. Who's coming? What's happening? And then Ali stands up again. He says, I am the one for this. Ana laha ya Rasulullah. And what did the Prophet ﷺ said? Huwa Amr. And just like that. That's Amr. Just sit down. So he sat back down. So this Amr now is having a field day. He turns around and he goes to the, he, say, he says to the Muslims, he goes, where is this, where is, where is this heaven of yours that's, that claims that the ones who are killed for it will enter it? This is what, you know, I want just to stop here. Can you imagine that you're in this situation, defending the honor and the nation of, 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 of Islam. And how you would be feeling on the other side, your emotions as you're hearing this. Ali radiallahu an steps up and he stands up and he goes, I am the one for this. Prophet says, sit down, it's Amr. He goes, walaw, walaw kana Amr. Even if it's Amr. The Prophet said, go on then. So this now, this man now, is, he's, he's turning around and he says to his people, he says, لَقَدْ بَحِحْتُ مِنْ نِدَاءِ لِجَمْعِهِمْ هَلْ مِنْ مُبَارِزِي I have knackered my voice, calling them, yeah, bringing them on. Is there anyone to come and face me? And he recited a famous poem. So there's Ali radiallahu an walking out towards him. He said, he said to him, La ta'ajalan, qad ataka mujibu, mujibu saltika ghayru ajizi. Do not yani, uh, rush, don't be too quick yani, to make these kind of poems and so on and so on. Coming to you is someone who is responding to your voice. This voice that is knackered out yani, trying to goad us. And then we see from this, in this incident that Ali radiallahu an came, he struck him once and killed him on the spot. Is the issue here that he killed him on the spot? Is the issue here that, you know, that he was so brave? The issue here is to understand strength of character. To understand here was a moment that the Muslims required bravery and courage and it was shown. In Khalid ibn Walid, it was shown. Anger was controlled for the sake of Allah. This is a great characteristic. But at other times, another even greater characteristic is to control anger. That anger which is not for the sake of Allah. That anger which is something personal. Something which happens in your own sphere. Something which has nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an ibadah sense, but something that has taken from your personal rights. Sometimes that's an even better characteristic, which is one of the khisal. One of the khisal that we need to be able to understand. And look to the same family. If you want to see examples, look at Ali radiallahu an. You know his story well, that he was fighting in a battle and about to kill the mushrik who had been fighting against him. And he spat in the face of Ali radiallahu an, according to the riwayah. And he didn't, and he stopped. He was about to strike him, then he stopped. And he said, the one on the floor said, why haven't you struck, why have you not killed me? Because if I kill you now, this anger will, will not have been for Allah, but because you spat on me. It would be my own personal issue. I'll be killing you for the wrong reason. In that rage, in that anger, he was able to turn off his anger like that. These are the people. These are the characteristics. Look at his grandson, uh, Ali ibn al-Hussein ibn al-Ali. Very famous incident. 
He was a tabi'i and he was himself making wudu. And he had a female slave who was pouring the water. And as you know, when they're making wudu, they're making it sitting down. And, he's, and she was pouring the water from a pitcher, okay, like a jug. And while he was making wudu, it slipped out of her hands and it hit uh, uh, Ali uh, on the head and cut his head. And of course, yani, subhanAllah, you're there making wudu and whack up on your head and you're going to get angry, aren't you? And he got very angry and he looked up. You, you just imagine yourself in that situation. Anger. What's happening next? You can freeze it, right? He looks up and the, 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 the female slave girl looks down at him and says, Allah says, and those people who restrain their anger, Allah says, so, 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 so you know, this is from Surah Al-Imran. So, the, so the, 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 uh, Ali, he goes, okay, I've controlled it. So she goes, okay then, this is clever female slave to be honest. She goes, and those who pardon people, so he goes, so he, can you imagine that bleeding and sitting there and he goes, okay, I've forgiven you. Wallah, you hibbul muhsineen. And Allah loves those who do good. Okay, you're free, go. This is yani, the people. These are the men. These are the khisal. These are the things that we want to find. That's the difference between them and the difference between us. These things are not far from us. When we say lost attributes, we're not talking about being the cleverest person in the world and those things which we can't achieve. We're talking about those things which are achievable in our own sphere. We're talking about those characteristics which when we work upon them, we can develop them. We can develop ourselves to be brave and to be strong and to have guts and to be these people who are able to control anger and display anger in the right time. These are all things within our own capacity. But it's whether we want to purify ourselves and study the people who perfected them. It's whether we want to study them and then actualize them today. It's down to us whether we want to do that. And if you look at the other, for example, the, the, the skill of acumen, the skill of politics, the skill of being quick and, and clever with the people. This is also able to be studied and achieved for the right reasons. Today they teach these kind of sciences, how to outmaneuver people and strategy and, 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 and the theories of this and the theories of that. But people use it for dunya sense. How many Muslims study this so that they can excel in their own society? How many Muslims have seen the earlier generations perfect these, like from the Duhatul Arab, like Mughir ibn Shu'aba, radiallahu an. They used to say that he was the, from the most quickest and the most cleverest. That you would try to take him down and he would be at the same time taking you down. He was put as a governor over Bahrain and the people did not like him. The people did not like him and they caused fitna against him. So what did they do? One of their criminals, criminal tribe leaders, he, he went to the rest of the, the, the people, the rest, the rest of the tribes, and he collected 100,000 dirham. A lot of money. And he went to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, who was a khalifa at that time, and he said to him, he said to him, Ya, ya, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I've brought this 100,000 to you. Do you know something? Your, your, your governor, the one that you appointed, he came to me and he gave me this money and he said, put it yani, away, uh, you know, away from the Baytul Mal. Yani, you know, try to uh, concoct this kind of uh, story against him. So what did, uh, what did Mughir ibn Shu'ba do? He came to, uh, Umar ibn Khattab summons him and he said, what's this? What's, uh, yani, what's this person saying? What's this 100,000 uh, dirham and your claims that you're making, uh, that he's said against you? So Mughir turned to him and he said to Umar straight face, he said, it's true. It's true. But actually it's not 100,000, it was 200,000. So, 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 so Umar goes, huh? 200,000? Uh, first of all, you did this. I can't believe that you did that. Number two, you're actually admitting to it and then saying it's more as well. He's in a state of shock, right? And then he goes, what for? And Mughir says, you know, my family is getting big and he has needs and, and so on. But now this criminal now is now really now stressed because now he's thinking, I know now what's coming. Where's the other 100,000? So then Umar then says, right, so okay then, so where is the, the rest? And this criminal immediately recognizes he's, 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 he's had it. So he said to him, Wallahi, uh, this was a plan and we were lied and we're sorry and forgive us. And we tried to, you know, uh, make a bad name out of him, but yeah, we were lying and, and so on. And who is able to utilize the skills that we use in our secular sciences today to this level to, to make sure that yeah, justice is, is, is enabled and achieved? where it's really needed for the Muslims these days. We're able to judge between the people. Why is it that our judges today 
in our villages and in some of the in the, in the very culturally yani, uh, some of the some of the, the, the problem areas of our country here where the, the imams of the masjid do not have the real the legal acumen or the political skill to deal between people and you know why because our Muslim, our parents, our generation don't put their best children forward for Islam. It's the other way around. We put our best children towards doctor, or to medicine, engineering, and so on. And if they can't get into that, oh, well, then there's always any yani, ilm course or darul ulum or there's always this. We, it's like a, we either push them for the best, and if not, then we send all the thick ones there. This is, yani, this is the way of revival, this is the system, and so what do you expect then an imam or someone who is trying to deal with complex issues and cases? How is he going to be able to deal with it when he doesn't have the life skills and the, and the, the ilm and the ability? And talking about justice and oppression, how many uh, of the Muslims today have been able to concentrate and utilize what we have as a legacy left by the big imams to, to push our, uh, our protest in a non-violent way. Forget about violent, non-violent, uh, non-violent way against the oppression that we are under today. How many examples do you want to see of people in our Islamic history who have fought against oppression and, and hardship and beatings and torture? Do you want Imam Ahmed's story? Do you want the story of Imam Malik? Do you want the story of Ibn Taymiyyah? Do you want the story of even contemporary times, Sayyid Qutb? you want to hear about the people who were killed for the religion? You want to know? And how about the, the, the thousands that we don't know? Who have this characteristic of, of istiqama, of standing for, the, for, for principles, standing for Islam, willing to sell the life of this dunya for the hereafter. How many thousands do we not know who are languishing in the prisons and being tortured by these criminals? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows one of the best of them, Sa'id ibn al-Jubayr radiallahu an, One of the greatest scholars of Islam from at tabiin one of the greatest of them and recognized for his ilm and his fiqh and everything but mostly known for his stand against tyranny and oppression and against not the oppression of a family member telling you you can't go out or an uncle member saying you can't get married but against the greatest oppressor that was seen by the by, in their lifetime Hajjaj ibn Yusuf a man who used to kill and shed the blood of Muslims for fun he used to find it like a, a game he used to, in fact, they, I say a game, there was a person who, uh, one of his team, they used to say that he used to kill the Muslims by, burn, by pouring boiling water over their heads and watching them melt uh, and die. And he said, this is nothing but a game, just chop their heads off. Yani for him, life was nothing. And he, the, 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 the rule that he imposed and the, uh, the tyranny that he imposed and the, the people, the tabi'een and the sahaba even that he attacked and killed, unbelievable. People too terrified to stand up against him. But he underestimated the Muslims. He underestimated the fact that we have khisal, we have these characteristics that the Prophet ﷺ has laid out, explained, and then put them out on offer for everyone to go and take from them and study them and implement them. And Sayyid ibn Jubair took up this, st this stance of bravery. And when he was brought against Hajjaj ibn Yusuf in chains, and he stood against him. And Sayyid ibn Jubair knew, knew that what was going to happen now was what had happened to the many before him. This was now his final time. And Hajjaj wants to humiliate him in front of all the people. And he wants to bring him down and kill him in a show of power and, 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 and respect for himself. So he said to him, of course he knew who Sayyid ibn Jubair was. He was the greatest scholar alive at the time. He goes, who are you? To try and, you know, humiliate him. So he said, I am Sa'id ibn Jubair. Sa'id means a happy one, ibn Jubair. He said, La wallahi anta shaqi ibn Kasir. Uh, Hajjaj said to him, No, you are the, um, the, uh, the miserable one. Shaqi ibn Kasir, son of the defeated one, son of the uh, like, uh, broken one. So ibn Jubair says to him, I think that my mother was more knowledgeable about my name and my father's name than you were. And now he's making him angry. Yeah, they're making him bubble now and, and responding to him in every single way. He goes, Wallahi, I'm going to kill you in a way that I've never killed anyone before. Never has anyone been killed like that before and never will I kill anyone like that after. And uh, Sayyid ibn Jubair straight to his face, he says, Wallahi, how you kill me like this, you will be killed in the hereafter. The man says to him, he goes, your, your, life, your life is over. He said to him, then you will have ruined my dunya, but I'm going to ruin your akhirah. And he killed him. And he died. Shaheed. 
Shaheed, yani this is the people yani, who have born. Shaheed, you know, a martyr is the word, but actually they are living witnesses. From shahada, yani, to, to witness, they are living witnesses to the khisal of, of, of this religion, to the characteristics of this religion, to those qualities that have made this religion, given the people in this religion the ability to perfect it. This is the, these are the, the, the virtues, these are the attributes that are lost from us in our time. And if you're thinking, by the way, that this is all very male-dominated, then the women do have, have nothing to fear because, or, or the women have nothing to relax about rather, because, you know, it seems like the whole pressure is upon the men and everyone. No, these are upon every single person. But the women themselves have so many fantastic character, characters in Islamic history for them to look at and to admire, whether it's from their ilm point of view and taqwa. And, you know, you heard about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and his adl. What about the one who supported him and gave him the ability to do that adl? His wife, Fatima. And if you see, behind, they say behind every great man is a woman. How do you think someone like that, Umar, is able to practice Islam to that level and to sacrifice his entire life and the, the ability to, to enjoy life with much wealth and, you know, and, and, and get to that level except that someone else has to be willing to do that? Fatima was one of the richest women of that time. She gave away the money as if it was like a game of monopoly. You know when you come and you land on Mayfair and they say X amount to 100,000, you just chuck it over because you know it's paper money, right? It has no value. This is what they used to say. They give money away like as if it was nothing. Imagine. You can't imagine because we, no, but we don't have the money to give it away. And even if we did have the money, how many of us would give money away like it had no value? This is what they were up to. This is what they used to do. They were patient with what, they, were patient with what they had to go through. How do you think that the big people and the imma of Islam, the big imams, how do you think they were able to become to such a, to such a status? How would they be able to, how would you think they reached the state of ilm and perfection, except that the mothers and the women behind them allowed this, allowed this to happen? How many of the mothers at that time expressed and showed patience of the highest order to lose their children, to, to give their children away? Lose the childhood, the years where you love your child most, so that they can go and study and learn adab and ilm and, and, and so on. When the, wife, when the mother of Imam al-Bukhari sent Imam al-Bukhari away, for them at that time it was a little action of patience and so on. But what a sacrifice, what an act of patience that it created for us the man who is Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers in hadith, who created for us the greatest book after the Qur'an. It is these actions. Look at the other women. Yani, there's something about leaving people to go and study. What about those who have sacrificed their children? What about Khansa, the poetess at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, who sacrificed and gave away four of her children for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and fight and be martyred in the defense of the Muslim nation? This cannot happen. Yani, perfecting our, our attributes, our characteristics and character cannot happen without looking and studying the actions and the sacrifices of these people. We will never ever be able to understand unless we look and we see what they have done for us and then try to recreate that in our own lives. These are what we need to try and achieve. These khisal. And they just say, and we have to try and combine them, you know, working on one and two and, you know, this is the, the actions of a weak people. Where's the honor in that? Where's the karam in that? Honor. Another great khasla, karam, being generous and having dignity. How important is it for the Muslims to have dignity today, more so than ever living in this country, for example, where the Muslims have such a reputation of living on handouts and charity and so on. The a'imma, the people of sharaf and ilm, they used to say, Imam Sufyan al-Thawri radiallahu anhu, he said that to, if I eat in the plate of another person, it is like a humiliation upon me. That person will always have one over me. I will, never be able to, yani, I will never be able to look at him in the eye. He will always have that on top of... Yani, how do people think about that when it comes to the little things about food and eating and relationship with the people? And it's true, Wallahi, it's true. Because the second you show your weakness like that, and you might think it's not a weakness to accept an invitation. No, it's not an invitation. It's not a weakness. But what's a weakness, what is a weakness, is it that for those people who want to be independent and want to maintain their honor, then they will be the ones who will, instead of allowing other people to invite them, they will be inviting the people. They will be the ones who will be making sure that they are most generous and allowing the others to eat at their expense, as opposed to them eating at other people's expense. They were that careful. They were so willing to, uh, to take the hard life. They were so willing and they were so eager to do that. 
just so that they could be independent. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu advised his companions specifically, a khas advice, a specific advice, do not ask other people for things and put your trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Not that it's impermissible or haram to ask someone else, but when you do, then you've now just put yourself down a bit. Now, Yani, the other people will not see you as strong and as respected as, 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 as maybe you are or as maybe you should be. Yani, Islam teaches us in a way that sometimes it's better to be in a more difficult situation and put hardship upon us. The rewards will be seen afterwards. The rewards will be seen afterwards. And this is not pride, by the way, as our ulama tell us. That this is not, there's a big difference between this being, being, being dignified and being proud. Because being proud means to want others, uh, you know, making the others uh, uh, thinking that you're better than the rest and the others are under you. But dignity means that you don't want to lower yourself. You don't want other people to think that you are nothing, uh, any low and so on, and despised and weak and dependent. So if you, how, how long could I go on for? The different characteristics, they're, they're there for us to look and study, but how many people will take this opportunity? And you really, and it's the only way to, re, to revive our Islam today, really. And if you look at what they said about the Imam uh, Layth ibn Sa'ad, radiallahu an, the great faqih and Imam of, of Nasr and one of the contemporaries of Imam Malik, they said about him, there was not a single khasla that one could use to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illa that that tilka khasla kana fihi that except that that particular khasla was found in him Layth ibn Sa'ad in emulation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looking to find these characters identifying them st standing there and, and, and thinking bravery, courage, honor Patience, commitment, istiqama, ittiba, thinking about them, actualizing, studying them, and then applying these in his own life and their own lives. So this, yani, we, we don't have any time to, to continue. Just a brief reminder, this was uh, to you know, hopefully bring the, uh, the conference to a close and inshallah, you know, give some kind of uh, context to the, 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 to the title, to understand what's, being, what's, what's, what's the message that we're trying to give here is that every Muslim has the ability to find these lost attributes and the one who finds them and applies them and perfects them then he will become excellent he will have rediscover rediscovered excellence and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq yani to be able to come close to him through this khisal and uh, anything that is correct and of course it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything naqas or weak or wrong and yani it comes from myself or shaitan Allah ta'ala a'lam وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين